your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now, but something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman Podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman Podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. If you are a regular listener, and even if you're brand new, and you identify as being driven but distracted, having big, bold dreams, but not always being able to reach them, then I'm going to follow my hunch and say, you're probably a perfectionist. I talk about perfectionism so much with my coaching clients that I'm kind of embarrassed that I haven't done a podcast episode on the topic for a good little while. I was looking through my back catalog and realized the last episode that was devoted exclusively to perfectionism was number 12. I called that one the cure for perfectionism. If you haven't listened yet, go on back and give it a listen. And even if you have listened, you probably forgot all the juicy goodness. So listen to it again anyway. But I realized this is such a struggle for so many bold, brilliant, beautiful souls that I know and work with that I need to come back and talk about it again. And I'm going to keep on talking about it because perfectionism holds so many women back. It can be managed. It is not to be confused with having high standards or striving for excellence. Perfectionism is the inability to be satisfied with anything done well because we can always imagine that it could be better. This is very time consuming. It eats up our energy and our bandwidth. It makes us unable to ever feel satisfied with anything we accomplish, no matter how many other people think it's the absolute shit. I could go on, but this is just the preview. It's not even the content yet. So before we go there, I want to share with you our pod praise for this week. This one comes from Kresna F., who is a brand new member of the Driven Woman Facebook group. She says, I checked to see if there is a podcast about intimidating women, as people think I am, and you were the first recommendation provided by Apple Podcasts. I feel every word is talking right to me. I felt it in my heart, and I automatically subscribed. Well, thank you, Kresna. This is a lovely, heartfelt review that lets me know when you're speaking the right words to the right people, it moves them. And that's exactly why I do this. So thank you for your review. Thank you for joining the Facebook group. And for those of you that haven't done so, we're having a hell of a time in there. So please do join. Anyway, without any further delay, I bring you the high cost of perfectionism. It might be a little hard to hear, but you know, I want you to reach all of your potential. And if perfectionism is part of your psychological makeup, it's like driving a race car with your pedal all the way to the metal and the emergency brake on. You're burning up all the good stuff and spinning your wheels. So here we go. Enjoy. Brilliant clients are card carrying perfectionists. This is not just my opinion, it's how they refer to themselves. There's a lot of ways they describe the tendency overthinking, second guessing, some actually call it perfectionism, researching something to death, never ever feeling quite ready, needing more information, having to fix things with just the tiniest amount of typos, feeling rushed when making a decision any decision, the need to know all their options before feeling comfortable choosing any of them. Maybe you can relate. Now, some of them are very gifted. Many of them have ADHD and all of them are ridiculously creative and talented. My favorites are the ones who can be defined by all these labels. And this is because I identify with them and because it took me years Uh, let's be honest, decades to find a way to embrace my always busy brain. And I want to share it with as many as I can. 
And when you have made the audacious decision to take all that bold, brilliant badassery and become an entrepreneur, perfectionism can crush you. Let me tell you about one of my clients, incredibly difficult making decisions. Now she is whip smart, a PhD level scientist. Her understanding of chemistry, physics, and biology are so much more than I could ever hope for. Even if you gave me all the time in the world to study them, like if I was in prison and had nothing else to do, and an exciting incentive to do so, still couldn't do it. But when it comes to choosing where to take a vacation or what tile, granite, or wood choices to use in her kitchen remodel, she would retreat into what I call NRM, never-ending research mode. By the time she would genuinely feel prepared to make those decisions, she would have acquired enough knowledge to pass both the contractor's license exam and be certified as an interior designer. And even then, even then, she would be riddled with doubt after the fact, asking herself over and over if she really, if she really made the best, the very best choices. It's truly painful to be so smart that every decision you make has to measure up to your ultimate potential. A person of average intelligence would find this absurd. And I've experienced it far too many times to find it the least bit amusing. And I've also worked with so many clients who have had their lives nearly ruined by their perfectionistic tendencies. You know, in my opinion, regret is one of life's most toxic emotions. It's a potent brew consisting of two parts anger, three parts guilt, five parts grief. It's just gross. And being afraid of making the wrong choices to the point where no choice at all is a splendid way to opt out, it's just a waste. It's a waste of our precious human life. And as an entrepreneur, it's usually a waste of opportunity, if only it were a rare event. Now, as a coach, some of the work I am most proud of doing is when I can help someone recognize that at least some of the decisions that they're tortured by really aren't as important as they think they are. Some things are truly significant and totally deserve a bit of obsessing over, but many things truly don't matter. The problem is that perfectionism means you're obsessing over getting it right every single time. It's a trap, the kind you can't get out of. I've seen women going out to dinner with a friend or partner, agonizing over the menu, unable to choose. Hey, listen, unless you have near fatal food allergies, you could seriously choose anything. I mean, you could literally close your eyes point to something and then open them or flip a freaking coin or ask a total stranger what they would pick and even go with that. Ask the waiter. I mean, listen, these suggestions might seem frivolous, but for the genuinely perfectionistic among us, hand raised, they're deadly serious. Things have only gotten worse since the internet came around. I mean, once upon a time, We were limited to the information that could be found in the local public library. Remember those? Or maybe one's face-to-face social network. But now, now, thanks to the Google gods, any question that could even be imagined can be researched endlessly. Any topic, however obscure, can be dissected and analyzed like a laboratory specimen and then looked at from a slightly different angle or nuance and a whole new rabbit hole is formed. How is one to know when enough really is enough? Now, I suppose some of us can set deadlines or word counts. I have done that. In fact, I even recommended it in an earlier episode on perfectionism. I believe it's episode 12, and I called it the cure for perfectionism. So if you're liking this topic, go back and have a listen to that one too. At the end, although I want you to listen to the whole thing, At the end, I give some suggestions for ways to start to work on weaning yourself off from this tendency. But the reality is a boss who threatens to fire us unless our magnum opus is laid ceremoniously on their desk by the end of the day, 
you're your own boss. So if you are the bossy person in your life and there is no one else to call it quits on your never ending research mode, is there any solid proof of the exact point when research comes to a screeching halt and anything beyond that is the proverbial rabbit hole? There's no tool, technique, ninja trick, or voodoo curse that works for everybody 100% of the time. I have clients ask me on the regular, and I always tell them the same thing. I'll tell them what I'm about to share with you. You can take it at face value like all things. I offer it with an open hand and suggest that you accept it as an experiment. It's not a promise, and it's for sure not a guarantee. But if you know you are spending too much time making choices and you know in your heart of hearts that some of them really don't warrant that level of concern, then go ahead and try one of these strategies. See what happens. I guarantee your brain won't like it, at least not at first. Because if you are an entrepreneur and a perfectionist, it is definitely costing you. The opportunity cost alone is probably one of the biggest expenses because while you are busy thinking about the optimal way to pitch that client or the wittiest copywriting that could be gracing your homepage or whether TikTok or maybe IG Reels is the better showcase for your short form video, other less brilliant newcomers are flooding in where you could be dominating the stage. And the truth of the matter is that waiting is always at a high cost. The barrier to entry for entrepreneurship has never been lower than it is now. And I am sure I am not the only one who has noticed that it is only the truly genius individuals who are stricken with perfectionistic self-doubt. Meanwhile, the shamelessly self-promoting know-nothings are blowing up every channel with all kinds of noise and little of actual value to offer. But they're doing something we're not. They are taking action and learning from their mistakes. The very mistakes that a perfectionist finds so excruciating that we waste our genuine first strike advantage figuring things out. When it comes to risk-taking, and risk-taking is a big part of entrepreneurship, being willing, I underline and italicize, being willing to fail and not making it mean too much is probably one of the biggest advantages you could ever have as an entrepreneur. I cannot tell you how many times I have been passed by by someone who did not have half as much as I had to offer. But perfectionism was not slowing their role. Costly, indeed. Now, listen up. If you think this is an invitation to take, take a spin around the wheel of shame, you have not been listening to the Driven Woman podcast long enough. This is your one and only plug in this episode for you to binge through a few more episodes. Because I will never, and I mean never, promote a victim mindset or negative self-talk our brains are far too good at that shit already with no help from me. But what I would like to suggest instead is that you try one or more of the following suggestions, all of which have been proven to curb your enthusiasm for perfectionism. As long as you give them a genuine trial, you have an open mind, and you practice them for at least a couple of weeks. There's something magical about doing something for two weeks that really gives you enough feedback to know if it's a keeper or if it was just a trial run. There are no miracle cures for perfectionism, my friend, but considering how costly it actually is for an entrepreneur, I'd say you've got nothing to lose that you are not better off without anyway. So why not? So here we go. You got a pencil ready? Here we go. Try setting a timer for five minutes the next time you have to order off a restaurant menu. It could be a silent one on your Apple Watch. No one needs to know. When that timer goes off, you simply order the next item you see. Don't think, don't question, and don't resist looking. You might like the item. You might love it. You might hate it. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are beginning to break your addiction to believing 
that you can only make a choice when it's the perfect choice. Or up the ante, go into a clothing store. That is, if you still know what one is and where they can be found. Pick out two items that you really can't choose between. Walk up to a salesperson or another customer who looks to be about your size, age, and type and ask them to choose, saying, I just can't. Promise yourself ahead of time that you will buy whatever they pick, no matter how you feel about the choice at the time. Again, you can always return it later, darling, but you are training your brain to make imperfect decisions. Good enough decisions. Nike slogan, just do it decisions so that you can prove to yourself after making enough of them over enough time that so many things we fret and waste time about really don't matter and you can totally live with less than perfect. Now, I know too much about the brain to try to persuade you otherwise. I know for a fact it won't feel great at first. It won't. But you're a big girl and it's okay. You will get better at it. I promise. And when you do, you'll begin to notice other things too. You see, once the high cost of perfectionism starts to take up a little less of your bandwidth, you will notice that you're laughing more. You might catch yourself humming absentmindedly. Your shoulders will begin to lower themselves on their own, and you may stop having so many headaches and stomach upsets and rashes. Because in addition to being costly, perfectionism hurts. It hurts us physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and it hurts our pocketbook too because of the opportunity cost I've already been talking about. So learn to embrace imperfection. It is the way to lower the cost and stop the suffering. That's all for now. Have a great week. Hey, it's Diane. Can I be honest with you? At the beginning of each new year, I always told myself, this is the year I'm going to get my habits dialed in. This is the year I'm going to be crystal clear about my goals and I'm going to crush them. This is the year I'm going to get my shit together on every level and I'm going to do it all by myself. Been there, done that, got a whole stack of t-shirts. But you know, it wasn't until I started working with my own coach that I realized what a difference it makes to have guidance, support, and accountability from someone who's not only like-minded, but like-brained. Yeah, I'm talking about another driven woman, entrepreneur, who also has ADHD and has got it going on. I have two openings in my signature one-on-one 12-week coaching program, and one of them might have your name on it. There's a link to a free consult with me in the show notes if you think this might be the year that you really get serious and go all in on an ADHD-friendly business and life. While you're thinking about that, Have a listen to what one of my client's success stories has to say about the difference it made to work with me. So I remember when we talked about what you introduced as habit stacking, so pairing pairing your habits. And when you did initially bring that up, it, w- my initial reaction was like, ugh, like that sounds awful. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But that was like one of the first things that we, one of the first shifts that our work together had changed. And that is something that I'm grateful for every day. So the first thing I do in the morning is I go pee. And so what your, your advice was, Take your medication, you know, right after, have your glass of water there in the bathroom. And so that's sort of my daily routine is going to the bathroom, taking my medication, contacts, coffee. Yeah. And it's 
great because it just cuts out any chance of forgetting, which then would lead to kind of lollygagging around. And then like, oh, wait, have I taken it? I should take it. Wait, but this one other thing. And so just it, that really starts off the day so consistently and well. So that is the first thing. And then with regards to the rest of my morning routine, my best friend and I, we live together and we exercise in the morning now. So we've been doing that for the past four months, like at least four days a week. And so we, we do beach body and it's just really fun because we do have the accountability of your, there's going to be someone waiting for you. So your butt better be up. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.